For all of us that have only been interested in cinematography in the digital age, it's hard to grasp film stock. We see older DPs talk about it like how we talk about digital, but it seems like a different world, or at least it did to me when I was first starting out. After the success of the previous video and the numerous comments asking for a follow up, I had no choice but to make it. So in today's video, I'm going to be following the same premise as the previous one, looking at a couple of aspects of film stock that need simplifying. In this case, perforations, speed and exposing. Perforations, otherwise known as sprocket holes, are a difficult one as it makes complete sense in my head as to what they are, but I'm having trouble putting it into words. I think the best way to start though is what they are. Simply put, these are what the claws or pins, I don't know what the technical term is, inside of a film camera used to transport the film through it. So having more of these perfs are going to create a bigger and therefore more detailed image, and the lesser amounts there are, the smaller and lower quality it's going to be. However, having a lower amount of perfs definitely comes with an upside, as the smaller amounts there are, the lower the running costs are. For example, a 400 foot roll of 4 perf 35mm is going to give you on average about 4.5 minutes of runtime. IMAX film on the other hand, which consists of 15 perforations, will give you about a minute and 10 seconds on the same length. If you are on an ultra tight budget though and you still want to shoot on film, then 2 perf Super 16 is perfect. You have a few aspect ratios to choose from and you can get around 11 minutes of runtime on only 400 feet of film. Now you may have heard the term negative pull down being thrown around when talking about film stock and again, in simple terms, it's the way in which an image is exposed to light. Now the most common variant of this is 4 perf and 3 perf due to the wider ranges of native aspect ratios as unlike on digital where we can just change it later, you kind of need to figure out what you are using beforehand on film. You'll also note that if you look at any given film stock there's a 90% chance that it will have a vertical pull down as you don't need the frames as tall. However, on something like VistaVision or IMAX it's horizontal as the frames and film in general are taller. Something much easier to explain however are those numbers before the T or D. Now as you or I would know them, they are the ASA or ISO, basically how sensitive the film is to light. Also something I didn't realise until researching this video is ISO stands for International Standards Organisation. Back to the speed though, the higher the number the less light it needs, which is why if we do see films shot on just one stock it tends to be something like 500T. For example, Call Me By Your Name, which was shot on 3 perf Vision 3 500T 5219, with those numbers at the end just being the film code. And fun facts about that film, they only used one lens and one camera, the Arricam LT and Cook S4s. But what about over or underexposing your film and then pulling it back later? What does this do? Is it something I hear a lot about but I rarely see it explained? Now, when it's done in a professional film setting, it's pretty much because the DP wants it. There are times where it's an accident, but luckily we can just call it a creative decision. Now, overexposing is definitely preferable to underexposing, as with film, it just makes it a bit denser and will create a lower contrast that you can then bring it out later. In simple terms, it's basically just another process in creating the look for a film. As for when you hear pushing and pulling, it's just regarding the development time. This is an aspect that requires a full video explanation though, so think of this as a Marvel style teaser for a later video. I know this video is shorter than usual, but as this is a series based on simplifying, I didn't want to overcomplicate anything. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, not just if you did, if you have a recommendation for an analysis, leave it down below. Thank you so much for watching and maybe I'll see you next time. Bye.